December 15th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Proverbs chapter 14 of the Old Testament. Every wise woman builds her household, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. The one who walks in his uprightness fears the Lord, but the one who is perverted in his ways despises him. In the speech of a fool is a rod for his back, but the words of the wise protect them. Where there are no oxen, the feeding trough is clean, but an abundant harvest is produced by strong oxen. A truthful witness does not lie, but a false witness breathes out lies. The scorner seeks wisdom, but finds none, but understanding is easy for a discerning person. Leave the presence of a foolish person, or you will not understand wise counsel. The wisdom of the shrewd person is to discern his way, but the folly of fools is deception. Fools mock at reparation, but among the upright there is favor. The heart knows its own bitterness, and with its joy no one else can share. The household of the wicked will be destroyed, but the tent of the upright will flourish. There is a way that seems right to a person, but its end is the way that leads to death. Even in laughter the heart may ache, and the end of joy may be grief. The backslider will be paid back from his own ways, but a good person will be rewarded for his. A naive person believes everything, but the shrewd person discerns his steps. A wise person is cautious and turns from evil, but a fool throws off restraint and is overconfident. A person who has a quick temper does foolish things, and a person with crafty schemes is hated. The naive inherit folly, but the shrewd are crowned with knowledge. Those who are evil will bow before those who are good, and the wicked will bow at the gates of the righteous. A poor person is disliked even by his neighbors, but those who love the rich are many. The one who despises his neighbor sins, but whoever is kind to the needy is blessed. Do not let those who devise evil go astray, but those who plan good exhibit faithful covenant love. In all hard work there is profit, but merely talking about it only brings poverty. The crown of the wise is their riches, but the fool of fools is folly. A truthful witness rescues lives, but the one who breathes lies brings deception. In the fear of the Lord one has strong confidence, and it will be a refuge for his children. The fear of the Lord is like a life-giving fountain to turn people from deadly snares. A king's glory is the abundance of people, but the lack of subjects is the ruin of a ruler. The one who is slow to anger has great understanding, but the one who has a quick temper exalts folly. A tranquil spirit revives the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. The one who oppresses the poor insults his creator, but whoever shows favor to the needy honors him. The wicked will be thrown down in his trouble, but the righteous have refuge even in the threat of death. Wisdom rests in the heart of the discerning. It is known even in the heart of fools. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. The king shows favor to a wise servant, but his wrath falls on one who acts shamefully. God, I'm not married. I know you know that, <laughs> and I know you and I have conversations about that, but I absolutely love this first verse in Proverbs 14. Every wise woman builds her household, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. And I, I know many times this is applied to married women, but I think it can be applied to single women as well as, as men too. Uh, the wise woman builds up the people in her household and the people in her life. Can you imagine having a household where you've torn everyone down with emotional abuse and harsh words and to think that you would still have a healthy household? No, you actually are tearing down your house. And again, married women, single women, I think even men can, can hear this proverb and learn a lot from it. Because as a Christian, I feel like our household isn't just our physical house. Our household is the entire world where you have asked us to share the message of your grace, your love, and your forgiveness with other people. So if my household, especially as a single woman, is the entire world, 
why would I want to tear that down? Why would I want to destroy it? Why would I want to choose my way over your way? For my friends who are married, and even for some of my friends who aren't, I highly, highly recommend a book. Every single one of them, they've heard me say this probably a million times, and one of my married friends actually told me about it. It's a book called The Power of the Praying Wife. And I don't want the title to scare anybody away, uh, because I read it and learn so much about it. Uh, granted, it's specifically about a husband, but learning to, instead of being a judgmental wife, a nagging wife, a snappy wife, uh, a wife that a husband doesn't want to come home to, instead, completely bringing it to you, God, through prayer. If your husband is in temptation, maybe pornography or adultery, taking it to you in prayer instead of fussing at him. If your husband works too much and, and finances have become an idol to him, instead of whining about it or, or complaining when he comes home late once again or stays the weekend in the city, take it to you in prayer. And it's hard. <laughs> it's a hard book to read because I think our first reaction is to take control of the situation and our control is to vocalize how we feel. And this book teaches us a different way to give up that control to you, which is what we should do anyways as Christians, and allow through prayer for you to work in that man's heart. Yeah, I, I know not all women are, are going to be happy to hear that, but it's true. It's what you've asked us to do, to humble ourselves before you, to be obedient to you. And I've seen the power of that prayer of going to you, God, and letting you take control of that marriage, of that relationship, I have seen absolutely incredible things happen. I have a friend whose marriage should have disintegrated multiple times, dozens and dozens of times, and it would have out in the real world. But every time something went wrong, with quotes around it wrong, she took it to you in prayer. And even though at times it was really, really difficult, <laughs> really wanted to say something she didn't she took it to you and and her testimony is even more powerful as she praises you through all the incredible things you've done in her marriage now that doesn't mean that we remain silent of course not uh, but we need to understand that you are in charge of that relationship you're in charge of our household and just like my household the world and the ministry work that I do you are in charge of that running daily video Bible has been an amazing lesson in not being a control freak, which I usually am, because there was nothing I could control. All I could do was listen for your advisement and then do what you told me using the gifts you gave me. And then listen for what you asked me to do and then go do it. And it was a great exercise beyond everything else that this ministry has blessed me with. It was a great exercise in learning that control, that discernment, that discipline, that patience. God, Teach us how to use our words for good. Words are so incredibly powerful. And we're even going to hear more about words in Proverbs 15. Words can truly break somebody's heart. Or they can build up a household. A household that goes out to glorify and worship and praise you, God. Words can destroy. Words can also heal. Words can cause pain and they can also bless. God, provide us the wisdom that we need to discern what words we need to use for the situation. Allow your guidance to help us in these situations of knowing what to do and more importantly, what not to do. And God, for all those marriages out there, maybe today is a good day. Maybe today is a patui day. No matter where they're at, God, if it is your will, I just ask that you surround the people in that marriage with your power, your love, your strength, and you teach them to walk in your glory down the path that you have for them. Teach him how to love her and provide security for her, which is not always money. <laughs> and for her, allow her to respect him. Allow her to provide the control in the relationship via prayer to you, God. God, allow these incredible relationships that you brought together to glorify you, 
to bring amazing testimonies to your kingdom. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen.